Have you heard about the student in your class that between kindergarten and grade six had moved to nine houses, seven schools, and two continents? Or the teacher that had taught grade one to 12 and worked as close as 10 minutes from home and as far as a 26 hour journey from home? Have you taught the student that learned their basic skills in a language different from their native language? Or how about the teacher that teaches in two languages to students that speak three or four? If you didn't know them then, you know them now. Hi, I'm Nadia Leinigan, and I am no stranger to the impact of intercultural competence. So what is intercultural competence? Well, Michael Byram, an expert in the field of diversity and inclusion says, that intercultural competence is the ability to interact effectively with people of cultures other than one's own. Byram further breaks down this concept into three competencies. Knowledge, which supports our understanding of the cultures that surround us. Attitude, which acts as a platform for the relationships and connections we make as global citizens. And skills, which provide us with the abilities to better interpret and critically evaluate cultures different from our own. Now, as teachers, you're probably thinking, we wear so many hats when it comes to diversity and inclusion. Why put an emphasis on culture in our classrooms when we need to put an emphasis on other areas of need? Well, here's my why. Take a look at this world map. These stickers represent the students in my class this year. Varying colors represent the varying countries and continents that these students have come from and have all ended up in the same learning community. I feel confident that a lot of your classrooms look just like mine. And I also feel confident that a lot of the resources that you'll gather throughout this presentation will be useful in all areas of inclusion. And all of those resources will be linked to my blog in the comments below. So let's get started. My goal for this presentation is that it will provide guidance and motivation to teachers, educators, and administrators working in culturally diverse classrooms in order to enhance their intercultural competence. I will be discussing three main topics, exploring existing resources, building a safe space for learning, and tools and tips for empowering your community. My goal is that you will leave with a better understanding of intercultural competence and global citizenship, and you'll have the tools needed to progress with confidence. Step one, exploring existing resources. The most important tip for step one is don't reinvent the wheel. There are so many pre-existing resources that we can pull from when trying to improve our intercultural competence. As a great jumping off point, the National Education Association made this list on how to become a culturally responsive teacher in 2017. Within this list, we can see lots of ideas that we can utilize when building lesson plans around intercultural competence. Now, I'm currently a teacher working in Ontario, so I'm going to be using Ontario resource examples. But I implore you to look through your own curriculum, as well as any handbooks that your school board may have given you. You would be surprised how many tidbits of information on intercultural competence you can find in a resource that might already be in your cupboard. In Ontario, the arts curriculum has understanding culture as an underlying idea in their curriculum document. As an example, I chose to dig deeper into a subject that I currently teach. On one single page, Grade 3 Music, the very first curriculum point covered the importance of exploring a wide variety of cultures through song and dance. It went on to talk about looking at songs from different communities and talking about music in communities from around the world. Just a few days ago, I was looking through resources that I had in my own classroom and found my Ontario New Teacher's Handbook. I found that one entire chapter was dedicated to intercultural understanding. Within that chapter, they had very important suggestions for teachers on how to thrive in different situations related to culture in the classroom. I want to reiterate that although these resources are from Ontario, they could be used across the world. And I also wanted to make sure that I could point out how many resources have intercultural competence embedded within. My final suggestion for step one is to look outside your province and even your country. I found that the IB Primary Years program created an incredible visual that demonstrated that international mindedness should be at the forefront of your mission, vision, and values. Step two, build a safe space for learning. 
So what if we do all this research and collect all these resources just to find that our students weren't ready for this type of learning? We can't expect our students to act vulnerably if they haven't been given the tools to do so. That's why step two is about building a safe space for learning. Although it may be hard for teachers to put an emphasis on culture and education when they're trying to cover all of the academic areas that are necessary within a school year, it is so important to take a look at this visual created by a University of Western study. It talks about the relationship between a student's academics and their cultural and personal identities. There are so many different areas that we forget to explore in our day-to-day -day academic teaching. This past year, we had a new student join my class in December, and for the sake of this study, we will call her Leah. Leah arrived and immediately we noticed that she was struggling in our classroom. She had a very hard time being close to other students. Therefore, activities like drama and gym were really difficult for her and she often became very emotional. We also noticed that any time that she was paired with a boy, she felt very uncomfortable, and any time she had a class outside of her home room, a male teacher, she would ask to stay back and not participate. She very seldom made eye contact with other students, and we noticed that a lot of other areas in her academics were slipping. When addressing Leia's case, the first step is to consider cultural variables. Cultural variables are differences in behavior, outlook, and values between people from different societies. Body language, styles of humor, and attitudes toward family, authority figures, religion, gender roles, and time can all be very different in different cultures. Now it's time to use those cultural variables to help me better understand the observations I made of Leia in my classroom. It is so important to be critical of yourself and of your cultural biases when looking at intercultural competence in your classroom. As an example, something that I mentioned was that Leia did not like being close to students or adults. In my classroom, I rely heavily on collaborative activities in pairs and groups. That is my cultural bias, as it is something that I am used to and a strategy that I have learned in my own culture. The cultural variable here is proximity. The level of comfort that two people might feel in close proximity can vary from one culture to another. Leia was not able to excel academically during activities where she was expected to work in a hands-on or close proximity activity and therefore I needed to make an adjustment. It is important to stop at this point and acknowledge that not all of these traits are necessarily cultural. Although the purpose of this presentation is to draw attention to potential cultural variables, the point is to acknowledge them in our space and utilize them to help create strategies for individual students. After considering all of these factors, I decided to create an action plan for Leia. It was very important to cater to both her academic and her social needs. We decided to go with a gradual release approach, meaning that Leia would gradually become more comfortable as she became more immersed in the culture that she was newly a part of. By following the steps outlined in that case study, I've taken my intercultural competence level from understanding to integrate and you can too. Using that very simple chart, you can give yourself an opportunity to better understand the student in your class. Always consider how you can improve your practice to improve the lives of your students. As important as it is for teachers to have the tools that they need in order to create a culturally diverse and sensitive classroom, it is just as important for students to have those same tools in order to create a safe space. That's where empathy comes in. In the very beginning of my presentation, I showed you my world map activity. Using a world map, I allowed my students to put a sticker where they were born, where a parent was born, where a grandparent was born, and even where a great-grandparent was born if they knew. We then took a step back and looked at our map. We noticed that there were people coming from all over the world, and somehow all of our students ended up in the same space to learn together. We talked about the impact that can have on a learning community and just how big a privilege it is to have diverse cultures in one learning space. The next activity is a restorative practice. We also saw this activity in the case study for Leia earlier on in this step. A restorative circle can be used when students are struggling with a problem and don't know how to share with the rest of their community. The fishbowl tactic is something that I learned from the Center for Restorative Practices. 
It's important that students know that no names or specific details can be used in a fishbowl, but students have a chance to make suggestions and connect with other people based on the problems they're having. Our last activity is geared toward intermediate and senior students, as quite often we find that they're the students that forget just how important it is to put ourselves in other people's shoes. This activity is called Buddy Up, and quite simply, we ask that intermediate and senior teachers allow their students a chance to sit with primary and junior students and have conversations about tough topics like culture and religion and gender. Buddy Up is an easy way to support intercultural socialization, to provide leadership opportunities, and to reinstill an understanding of empathy in intermediate and senior students. Step three, it's time to empower your community. Congratulations, now you're ready. You have the tools and resources you need, your students are ready, and you as a teacher know how to look for student needs and how to address them. But what happens next year or the year after? What happens when the rest of your community isn't as prepared as you are? Does all of your hard work go to waste? Let's find out. The short answer is no, but it's up to you to make sure that that doesn't happen. Mosaic, a Canadian nonprofit organization based out of Vancouver, has been serving immigrant, newcomer, and refugee families for over 40 years. And they say that intercultural training is very effective because it develops cultural intelligence and provides strategies for dealing with culturally diverse behaviors and approaches. Studies have shown that building cultural intelligence helps us to form more constructive relationships and yields better results for our interactions. My first tip for engaging in intercultural competence training with your staff would be to establish ground rules for discussion. Lynn Weber Cannon has created a list of nine ground rules that should be provided at any conversation that has to do with inclusivity. A strategy that works really well for students and teachers is showing them what they already know. That's where the Create Your Own Diversity Toolkit comes in. The National Education Association created a diversity toolkit that outlines five qualities of a culturally competent teacher. I've put a point beside each one of those five competencies to prove that I'm already doing those things on a day-to-day -day basis. Give the teachers at your school an opportunity to prove that they are already taking steps to becoming more interculturally competent and they will feel more inclined to continue on their journey knowing they're halfway there. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I know the teachers have so, so much on their plates. It's not realistic for every teacher to follow your example and lead their classroom with a better intercultural competence than most. So that's why I'm gonna give you a handout, a little freebie to help you spread the word of intercultural competence in your community without feeling like you're overwhelming your staff. That being said, take some time to sit down with your colleagues, explain to them the benefits, teach them what you've been taught, and hopefully others will follow suit. The Build Your Own Diversity Toolkit, as well as this infographic that I have created, will be linked in the comments section below. This infographic is an excellent visual to put up in your classroom or to put up in your staff room to explain to other teachers what you are doing every day to better yourself, as well as guide them toward developing their intercultural competence. Well, that's it. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch my capstone project. And I want to thank you personally for taking the time to better understand how to improve your intercultural competence. We can no longer ignore that our communities are diversifying and as educators, it is our responsibility to better understand how to best teach the students in our classroom. So all I can ask of you is to stay empowered and keep working on bettering your community, your students, and yourself. Thank you.